Hey guys, it's Jenny on the block and I am here today talking to Dr. Varley. Hi, Dr. Varley. Thanks for being here. Hi, Jenny. Uh, so tell me a little bit about you. You're in the Department of Psychiatry? Department of Psychiatry at Summa Health. Okay. I'm the chair of the department. Nice. Oh, so you're like, you're up there. I like it. Okay. Talking to the leader here. I like that. Okay. Yeah. So I know the new year, you hear so many people walking around saying new year, new you, new year, new you. Uh, and I feel like a lot of times when people do that, a lot of times they're talking about their physical well-being. So a lot of people, they want to go to the gym more or they want to eat healthier or they want to cut out some of that alcohol uh, in the new year. But I know sometimes, uh, especially with what's been going on the past few years, mental health uh, should also be something that we look at when it comes to new year, new you. Um, so why should we include mental health in our goals? Well, I mean, it's a good question. I, I'm, I'm somewhat biased, um, a, 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 as you might imagine, by what my profession uh, is, that I think mental health and, and our emotional lives are extremely important and really are, are the, the architects of our, our lives. So um, even when people are doing things physically or focused on their body or their medical well-being mm -hmm. it, it's it's related to how they feel about themselves and wanting to do something different change something take better care of themselves and feel better right? yes so it's all connected yeah it, it does seem to be all connected uh what are some steps that people can take to improve mental health mm -hmm. well you know i i, I um I, I have uh i i think a a, a a somewhat simple answer to this. Um, and I, I share with people all the time, especially people who I'm talking with who come to me for, for help, is that there are all kinds of wonderful ideas out there. In fact, there've been hundreds, if not thousands of self-help books and how to and what to do. And, and it's all wonderful. And all the information for the most part in those books is really legitimate and, and well-founded. Mm -hmm. The problem is, doing something alone and when um it's you in a book or someone in a book or even the best ideas um what what really matters i think and to the heart of your question is i think what really helps is having some place where you can um talk where you can share where you can um, express things that you might not be able to share in the workplace or at home but uh in other words just breaking out of a sense of some emotional isolation and talk about things that are upsetting and, and difficult mm -hmm. in, in a place where you can do that and feel like um, it's okay. Yeah. So um, instead of directing people to do cer certain things, uh, you know, like to read this book or, or follow yeah. this diet or follow this regimen, I, I really encourage people to connect with friends and, and to, to not be alone and, and to talk mm -hmm. about the things that, um, that, uh, made trouble one. Okay. I love that advice. I think it's, it's super true. Um, cause I've definitely found that in my own life. So, um, so we're talking about prioritizing mental health. I know Summa Health has, uh, some huge commitments going on for mental health and they're opening a new behavioral health facility this month. So I know there's a free open house. So can we talk a little bit about what you guys are doing at Summa? Yeah. Well, uh, it, it's a very exciting time. I mean, it's a, a brand new building dedicated to um, behavioral health that will be located on the main medical campus of SUMA at, at the Akron City uh, campus. Mm -hmm. And we're celebrating that uh, January 14th. There's a, an open house from, I think it starts at 11. Mm -hmm. Let me get my times right. Yep. I yeah, 11, uh, 11 to 3 or so in the afternoon, so there'll be an opportunity to tour the facility, and uh, many of our behavioral health providers will be present to um, talk about their areas of focus and different things that will be in the building. Well, that sounds pretty nice. Uh, I guess my question then is, uh, with a great facility like that opening, how do I know if I need professional mental health, uh, uh, you know, checkups or our help, I guess. Yeah, that's a, that's another great question. Um, but I, I think mostly people know, um, okay. and they can trust themselves if they're feeling like they need help. Usually it's more of a fear of what does it mean if I ask for help or what, what, what 
bad thing does this say about me if I can't, you know, manage everything well by myself? So I think people know when they might benefit from help and just having the courage to do that. And and also back to the idea of a good friend is is maybe a, even better than a mental, mental health professional in some ways. Uh, <laughs> start there. Um, yeah. And sometimes good friends can also um, invite people to consider that maybe they ought to get help but not in a way that's derogatory or diminishing, but rather out yeah. of caring and concern. Yeah. And I feel like mental health has uh, lost a lot of stigma um, in the past few years because people are seeking that help. And, um, you know, I think talking to your friends used to be kind of a scary prospect. And now it seems like it's kind of an open dialogue, which has been refreshing, at least from my perspective. Yes. Yeah. Um, so as far as mental health care, uh, SUMA offers, obviously you have this new behavioral, um, health Institute opening up. What else do you guys offer when it comes to mental health? Because I know talking is important. Sometimes medications are important. So what, what do you guys do at SUMA? Yeah. Well, we, we have, uh, a, a really a full range of, of, um, different, um, uh, providers. We have psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, advanced practice providers, uh, a whole range of folks who operate in a variety of different settings. We have obviously inpatient um, psychiatry units when folks are really uh, struggling and suffering uh, around issues of personal safety and really require a, an intensive uh, engagement. So we have inpatient services, again, divided into different um, uh, Units dependent on uh, patients' ages. We have a geriatric unit, we have a dual diagnosis unit, and we have a couple of different general adult units. Then we also have programming that's outpatient, meaning people don't stay in the hospital, but come to the hospital three to five days a week for mm -hmm. anywhere from maybe four to six hours a day, okay. Monday through Friday, to have more um, intense support, but not having to be in the hospital. So it often provides a buffer so people don't need to go in the hospital. They can come to this program or as they're transitioning out of uh, an inpatient stay, they can participate in, in this program. And um, we also have just general outpatient care. So more traditionally coming to see someone uh, once a week or, or a few times uh, a month mm -hmm. or less to get uh, access to medication or talking therapy. Mm -hmm. um, we also have um, uh, a dedicated center that's focused on traumatic stress, oh. um, which is a relatively unique organization of clinical service that we have at SUMA. Okay. Because often what troubles people is uh, not so much something just like somehow wrong with their brain, but rather what they've experienced, what what's happened to them, and, yeah. and to have specialized uh, uh, treatment programs that focus on helping people manage and, and integrate um, uh, awful things that they've experienced in their life. Got it. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a and, full range. And, yes. And I should say addiction services. Oh, okay. Also important. Yes. yes we, we also um, have a significant history in our organization that um, the first inpatient medical detox unit for alcoholism was started at St. Thomas Hospital, which oh, is wow. Suma, uh, back in 1939. So we have a legacy that has its origins in the beginning of AA, and um, we've continued a, a, a consistent presence in, um, in addiction treatment and addiction medicine. Wow. Okay. Well, that's also great to know. Um, and what is the advice you have for helping uh, someone struggling with mental health? Um, to reach out. Okay. Reach out wherever there's trust. And and if there's no one you can trust, then come to a mental health professional. You should be able to trust us because yes. we're in this business to offer that and to help. So yeah. it really, it's a simple message. It's just about being able to um, have a safe place to share whatever pain or fear or difficulty you're experiencing. Okay. Yeah. Don't suffer in silence. That's what yeah. I always say. So. Well, and um, and the, the other, the other side of that, if I, if I might, is right. that um, listening to someone is a very important thing to be able to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Often 
we don't feel that people hear us. So when, when you know that you're talking about something and someone's listening, that's, that's doing something. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's providing someone a sense of connection and that um, what they're going through is, um, is relevant and, and real and someone else is noticing it. So yeah. being able to listen uh, to our, um, uh, our, our friends, family members, and, and hear what they're saying um, is an important step as well. Yeah, yeah, super important. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about mental health, especially with um, SUMA, then you can go to uh, sumahealth.org slash mental health. Again, it's sumahealth.org slash mental health, or you can call 330-379-8190. Again, 330-379-8190. And thank you, Dr. Varley, for being here today. And if you guys have questions, make sure you reach out. Very good. Thank Thank you. you.